So welcome to the Filthy Good Vino Bath Tub Winemaking Project. It's about day 11 now. And we've done a lot since uh, I last did an update. We ran a barrel off for barrel fermentation. You saw the barrel prep video. And we combined the remainder of the skins and fermenting wine at the time into one vat. And that's why this one is now so full. Uh, it has now finished its alcoholic fermentation, so all the sugar is gone, and it's it's now a very different stage of the winemaking process. So in the early stages, it was cold, it was full of sugar and water, the yeast hadn't kicked off, and the extraction of tannin and flavour and colour was very different. And as the fermentation progressed, the yeast went to town, they started to produce heat. And those yeasts actually chew up any oxygen that is being introduced into the wine. In actual fact, oxygen is really important for yeast to make sure they have cell wall integrity and that helps them maintain their health and gives them the ability to finish fermenting all of the sugar so there's nothing left in the wine uh, when that fermentation is finished. Now, they're also producing a heap of CO2 which is pushing the cap up and making it rise and lift. And that's not happening anymore. It's lifting a little bit, um, but nowhere near as much as it was during that peak fermentation or peak alcoholic fermentation period. We've added malolactic fermentation bugs to these, and the aim of that is to get the second fermentation, the fermentation that converts malic acid to lactic acid through and complete. And so that's ticking away nicely now. Um, but in this phase, we've still got a lot we can achieve with tannin, with flavour, with aroma, uh, by gently handling these skins and wine in a slightly oxidative environment. The reason we filled this vat right up is we don't want to go overboard with the, with, the, uh, with the oxygen. We just want to control it and let introduce oxygen slowly. So now instead of plunging it with a plunger or by hand quite aggressively um, three, six times a day, we're just gently handling it by hand uh, two or three times a day to make sure these skins are wet and moist and to introduce just a little bit of oxygen into the, into the wine. And that has a whole lot of consequences. It develops the flavours, it develops the aromas, but it also encourages polymerization of tannins. So it's day 14 of the Filthy Good Vino bathtub winemaking project and we've still got bathtub number one here macerating away on skins. The alcoholic fermentation has been finished for quite some time. And we're at that point where we're still slowly guiding the, the, this, this particular tub through a very gentle, gentle oxidation on skins. So when I get up first thing in the morning, what I like to do is smell the vat. And the best way to do it is actually not to just rip the lid off and let all the aroma out. It's actually just to crack the lid a little bit and waft it. So you can smell what's going on. And this morning, I'm starting to smell a little bit of that perfume that I'm looking for from a, a maceration. It's still fresh. Uh, it hasn't gone to that point where we're getting a real pencil shaving character, which is an indication that it's... Uh, perhaps starting to get to a, a point where we're ready to press. So I'm going to lift the lid and I'm going to talk about a few different things around tannins, oxidisation and what we're trying to achieve here. So you can see that beautiful condensation dripping down here that yes, tastes like grappa. It's a lovely thing. You'll notice what? that the cap has started to, uh, to drop down a little bit and it's staying a little bit more, more moist uh, than, it, than it has been. So that's a sign that some of the different activities have, uh, have really tapered off. Uh, so the, the second fermentation, the malolactic fermentation is probably slowing down a little bit, but still chugging away. Um, and overall though, the cap is still quite buoyant. Um, what's happening now with this, this very gentle oxidisation is that that's stimulating the polymerization of tannin. Okay, technical term. Um, so to, to ban the bullshit, what we're talking about is 
different talon molecules. So if you think this is a one talon tannin molecule and this is another one, the oxygen helps them come together and link. And they can form quite big chains. And as the chains get bigger, the tannin feels softer on your palate. So the tannin lengthens out and it also has less surface area of the particular tannin molecule to make contact with your tongue. And that means that it, it, it does get more supple in its feeling and more refined. So this gentle oxidization is partly uh, being done to encourage that. And obviously we're still on skin, so we're still extracting some different chemicals from those skins. But beyond the physical impact on the wine with mouthfeel and tannin, um, we're also looking for changes in flavour and aroma. So some of the characteristics you get through this process are a real perfume, some real flowers, and that's something that I was starting to smell this morning. You also get some earthiness, and, uh, and that's really something that's quite appealing as well. If you think of it in the terms of perfume, when people blend perfume, they look to have lovely, um, fragrant, sweet aromas, but they always look to balance them out as well. And they balance them with other characteristics, often dirty characteristics. So think about things like musk. Think about things like sandalwood. So those earthy, kind of funky characters help offset perhaps what might be a little bit too sickly and sweet if you just had the floral and the perfume characters. So by doing this maceration, what we're aiming to do is layer in a whole bunch of different flavours that will help balance the wine and make the wine more inviting to drink and to really build its personality. So the next step for this wine, when we're ready, when we think it's, it's been on skins for long enough, will be to press it. And when we press it, we'll be taking uh, it to the next stage of its life. And as we do that, and as we gently press it using a basket press, we'll extract different tannins as well as we apply pressure to the skins and squash all the liquid out of them. So combined by having all of these different components of the wine uh, brought together, we'll get something quite complete. We'll have the, the barrel fermentation wine, we'll have the extended maceration wine, we'll have a little bit of wine that we'll get from pressing the skins, and hopefully all of that will come together to give us something really quite complete. Beyond that, we'll start to then age the wine in oak and we'll see a bunch of different characteristics coming from that oak as well, layering in more flavour, more texture, making the wine more and more inviting and more exciting and, and hopefully, again, more complete. And we'll talk about that as the journey continues. So thanks for joining us on the Filthy Good Vino Bathtub Wine Making Project. Um, stay tuned and leave a comment if there's uh, something that you would like to know about, any questions you've got. I'd love to hear from you and uh, look forward to sharing the next instalment of the Bathtub Wine Making Project with you. Cheers.